So five minutes is a really tough gig, so I'm trying not to talk gibberish, but I have to talk very fast. So um, about five years ago, I gave up a perfectly good job and went back to uni to answer a question that was really vexing me, and that is, you know, are we using local provenance in our revegetation projects because it is the best performer? So over the last few years, I've been running some field experiments testing the sea if plants that are grown from seed collected locally on the Cumberland Plain have superior establishment success when I compared them to plants that have been grown from seed from different provenances. So the experiment I'm going to talk about today um, involves six species that are dominant or they're widely used in restoration projects on the Cumberland Plain. So for each species I had five provenances. One was the local and I compared that local to the other four provenances. So I had about 600 plants. So I had two field sites on the Cumberland Plain. One was at Mount Annan Botanic Gardens and one was at Cecil Hills. And each species, the growing time actually differed. So for Hardenbergia, they went absolutely rampant and I had to pull them out after seven months and some of the others were there for two years. Um, I realised in a panic last night, I can't go through all these slides for survival. So I'm just going to flip through them and just give you a summary. But please be impressed I did some stats and got some p-values. <laughs> okay, so just to summarise, so I did survival, some growth, um, some phenology measurements and also some morphological data. So to put that all together, was the local the best? Well, for the two eucalypts, the survival rate was really, really high, so the local was not the best. Um, so for eucalyptus three to corners, 100% of the plants survived, so it didn't matter where they came from. And for the crebras, it was 97%. The acacia falcata, it was completely the opposite. They just about all died, but they all died at the same rate. So the local wasn't the best there. Um, for Hardenbergia, the local wasn't the best there either. But when I came to the Themida and the Bursarias, um, the local did survive the longest. So the local was best for those two species. I should just add that um, I actually used Bursaria spinosa subspecies spinosa. So as you can see there, for two thirds of those species, the local was not the best. So for, for that vegetation community as a whole, there's really not strong evidence to say that the local provenance performs the best. So my results actually support the idea of mixing seed sources. But I caveat that by saying that I do think we do need to do um, genetic testing on Themida australis and possibly on Bursaria and Hardenbergia. But it is important to consider using or mixing up these seed sources because there are potential disadvantages in using local provenance. One of those reasons is because our populations are increasingly becoming fragmented. That means that um, population sizes are smaller and that means that there's a heightened risk of inbreeding depression. So collecting seed from these seed sources that are genetically depauperate actually means that there's reduced fitness, so that's for survival and reproduction. But I think we all kind of know that. But the game changer, I think, is climate change. So these small populations, these small populations usually lack the genetic diversity that's needed for populations to adapt and to evolve under these changing conditions. And our environments are changing really rapidly. So from a seed sourcing point of view, what's local now just might not be local in the future. And a really good example of this um, is this map which actually shows the predicted difference in biotic environments now and in 2070 under a high CO2 emission scenario. So the dark purple on this map, that actually represents um, future environments which is predicted to be environmentally unlike anything on the continent today. That grades down to the green and as you can see there's no green on that map at all. So this model is predicting that some climates will completely disappear. So I think that that's actually got um, great implications for our seed sourcing strategies and also for just conservation in general. So I'd just like to acknowledge and thank a lot of organisations that helped me with my um, project and all of those people that came out and helped in the field work. 
And I'm sorry it's so short and it's a little bit inadequate in some respects not to actually show you all the statistics, but I've run out of time. <laughs>